Hey there, comic book fans. I'm back from the comic shop again this week with five new comics to show you. But I also have five uh, collected editions, graphic novels, trade paperbacks, whatever they are to show you because it was my birthday, wearing my new birthday shirt, and I got some uh, collected editions for my birthday. But first, we'll show you my top of the printer books. I don't know, I may have had this one out before. It was like this uh, It Girl, Michael Allred Atomics cover. He did a lot of nice cover for this series. This one always pops out at me. And we also got this, uh, I've always liked this one since I was a kid. The Hulk smashing cap in his shield. This is what, Ron Wilson and Bob Layton, I think it says. Uh, Wilson and Layton, yes. I was, I was kind of like that one, especially like... Cap's face going, little bits coming out there. So these are the covers that have been sitting on top of my printer all week that I've been looking at. A uh, couple of good ones. Now let's see. Oh, the comic shop news. Siren's Gate. No idea what that is. Who's that from? Siren's Gate. Oh, dynamite. So it must be a dynamite thing. They certainly have a lot of dynamites. Got Draculina and uh, Vampirella, and I guess they got Siren's Gate too now. Too lots of uh, women with uh, tight clothes on. Let's see what did I get? Starhenge number two, the Liam Sharp one. And here, here's when I picked up the first issue, sort of on a, a lark, because I, I don't know Liam Sharp that well, because he's mostly a mainstream superhero guy. But I really enjoyed the uh, first issue of it. Of all the things to remind me of, it reminded me of Moonshadow from uh, John J. Muth and J.M. Dematius back in the 80s. And not because it's anything similar to it, but it sort of had a similar tone to it with a guy casually telling you stories about what's going on, even though there's th this has got more space opera in it, and I think the Moonshadow was a coming-of-age thing. But there was space opera in Moonshadow, too. So I liked the first issue a lot, so put, put it on my pull list, this one now. And there's the second issue. And then we've got Parker Girls by Terry Moore. Uh, Terry Moore from Strangers in Paradise... The Parker girls were, um, there's Kachu, one of the main Str Strangers in Paradise characters. She belonged to this international group. Uh, it, it was kind of an undertone in uh, Strangers, because Strangers in Paradise was really about relationships rather than action. But Kachu used to be a Parker girl who was one of these female spies who ran around the world for hire. Always good stuff, and I think this is this is about some of the the Parker girls having to get revenge for something. I can't remember. I don't know how long this is going to be. Most of his stuff recently has been around 10 issues, so we'll see. Uh, 8 Billion Genies, 4 of 8. And how long that one's going to be. This is the one where everyone, everyone on Earth all of a sudden gets a genie to grant them one wish, and chaos ensues. So this is this is all what's happening uh, in that in that world where... Looks like this is a superhero issue because end of last issue, one of the one, one of the kids wished to be a superhero. So I think we're going to see the consequences of that in this one. Then I picked up a couple of things. Those were the only three things on my pull list. Still no sign of Great Gatsby number five in my shop. So hopefully that'll be coming next week. But I picked up Love Everlasting. Tom King is the writer. Elsa. Charitier is the artist, Matt Hollingsworth the colorist, Clayton Cowles is the letterer. I just kind of flipped through it and liked the art and said, I'll pick this up. I have zero idea what it's about. Some love story, I, I suppose, but who knows what beyond that. Like that really, the art really caught my eye. And they had like four or five covers there. I just kind of picked the one that struck me best wonder who did this cover. Let's see. 151. So this is this must be uh, cover 5. I don't see any list. I see no list of cover artists. So Oh, well. Someone did, though. Does it say in the back there? 
Oh, this is the Jenny Frizen cover. No wonder I picked that one. I generally like Jenny Frizen's work. So, And then another thing I picked up off the shelf, even though it was a $5 comic, but it's a thicker one, is an Aftershock comic, Samurai Doggy. And that feels like it's around 40 pages. Pretty heavy, pretty good heavy cover stock and good stuff but I, I just flipped through it and i kind of liked the artwork and i was like samurai doggy that that's kind of like usagi or jimbo where's a good page there's samurai doggy don't really know what it's about besides a samurai dog but like i said i flipped through it and said oh it looks pretty good some strange page layouts there uh, and I think in the back is even, there we go, a map. I always like maps. So those are the five covers I got. Let me show you the uh, books. This is the first. I read this one on Hulu a while ago and really liked it. Uh, this is The Complete Warren Ellis Omnibus. It's by Warren Ellis and James Masters. And it's really good. I, this might be... Um, I was never a big fan of the James Bond movies. I read the Ian Fleming books back when I was uh, high school, college, and really enjoyed those. And this might might be my favorite Bond thing after the original books. Uh, it's 12 issues, two separate stories, all done by uh, Jason Masters and Warren Ellis. And I really like the art. Most of the art is... Um, he does yeoman's work with all these offices that James Bond is in. So it's just kind of like, uh, you know, he's constantly in offices everywhere. But where he really shines is at the end, at the, at the end scene, which takes place at night. In, uh, and this is the first story, where he has to break into, where is it? You know, he has to break into this sort of warehouse thing. And this, this issue or two is especially really well drawn. And I really know his placing of blacks. So it made me think, wow, I, I wish he had more of that to draw. He had some good fight scenes too and stuff like that. Rather than, rather than lots, of, there's a fight scene in an office. Or a medical office. So it's like, I was like, and it's funny, like, he did a good job with the offices, but offices are just boring. When he got out of the, when he got to get out of those offices and go to other um, locations, it was it was it, he he really shown uh, James Masters is really good stuff. So, uh, like I said, I read this on Hulu, put it on my uh, Amazon wish list, and my sister got it for me for uh, my birthday. What else did I get? The Realist: The Last Day on Earth by Asaf Hanuka. And I don't remember what the... I, I remember I discovered this recently. It says, The long-awaited third collection of the Eisner Award-winning series of one-page autobiographical weekly comics by New York Times best-selling cartoonist Asaf Hanuka returns to captivate, inspire, and challenge readers. Um, I just remember, I think I read about this, read a good review of it, so I put it on my pull list, and I, and I look forward to... Uh, Reading, so I guess it's a series of one page comic strips. Thinking outside the box. That's just my opinion. October. So I look forward to this one. Then the second Reckless, but now I now have the first and second Restless books. Once again, I, I read these on um, Hoopla, and then I put them on my Amazon pull list for you know someone in my family to get me sometime. So, got another one. It's uh, Sean Phillips and Ed Brubaker. I get all their stuff. Uh, it's funny because, you know, if this if this was coming out on individual issues, I it would be on my pull list. But since it's coming out as graphic novels, I just feel no rush to get them. So, I got the first two now, and there's two more to get, and still one's coming out this fall, I think it is. I'm not sure. But uh, I've read I've read them digitally, so I know it's good. And then Devil Dinosaur by Jack Kirby. This is the complete. How many issues is it? One through nine. 
I used to have the oversized hardcover of this, but it went out of print and got really expensive, so I sold it. So I decided to uh, put this on my wish list too. I'm like, I, I want Devil Dinosaur again. I'll I'll go for the uh, less expensive um, trade paperback. No problem. Let's see the paper doesn't look too glossy either that's pretty neat this is, this is kind of a matte finish paper what do we got here and it was only uh, 25 bucks i think is the list price so of course it goes for cheaper than that on amazon or someplace but um devil dinosaur glad to have that again and then the last thing i got was another thing i'm not that familiar with trots and bonnie this is a strip that ran in national lampoon my friend Bunch is the big National Lampoon fan that I know. He's the biggest N National Lampoon fan I got. Um, so it's I supposedly this, uh, it says back here, it's like this, uh, it's from the 70s and 80s. This sort of innocent looking strip that really isn't. There's some nudity. By, what's her name? Shari Flenikin. There it is over there. Um... Bunch must have told me he really likes this, and I've had it on my Amazon wish list for a while. Now I finally get to, to read it. Let me show you a little bit of my artwork. I've got one Gatsby thing done, uh, where there's a weird story. There's one scene in Gatsby where he fires his whole staff and hires this shady crew of people who won't talk. Uh, you know, they, they won't gossip about him. So that's why he wants him there. So at one point, Nick, the narrator, knocks on the door and this shady new butler opens the door. So for some reason, I wanted to do a illustration of the shady new butler opening the door. We got shady stuff behind him too. So that's what the, this, I don't know why I... Like, I'm working on one now that's a trumpet player playing jazz, and it's got all this crazy stuff in it, but this is just shady guy opening the door. <laughs> and this one is uh, one of my dreams of things, which I... Nice. I noticed after I did it, it looks kind of like this one I did. The... the, the they, they could exist in the same world, these two. They're facing the same way. They've got sort of the same three-quarter view with weird hats on. I, I You know, sometimes I come up with these themes that uh, I don't even know I'm coming up with as I'm doing. What's that one? That one's 142. That one's 147. So they're a few issues apart there. Anyway, there's some artwork. Lots of comics. And you guys have a good week out there.